Hello, and thank you for watching this Army Material Command video celebrating Women's Equality Day. The fight for women's equality has come a long way since the introduction of the Women's Suffrage Amendment in 1878. Over 42 years would pass before Tennessee became the last and final state to ratify the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote in August 1920. Fast forward another 51 years to August 26, 1971, when we as a nation first came together to officially recognize the anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment with the annual celebration of Women's Equality Day. In honor of Women's Equality Day, we would especially like to recognize the important role that women play in our country's defense. Women have actively supported our military since the early days of the Revolutionary War. It wasn't until World War II, however, that women were accepted into the active duty ranks with the establishment of the Women's Army Corps, or WACs as they were called, in July 1943. Army leaders such as General Douglas MacArthur and General Dwight D. Eisenhower published publicly praised the WACs for their service. MacArthur declared the WACs to be the best soldiers who worked harder, complained less, and were better disciplined, while Eisenhower commended them for their immeasurable determination, spirit, and efficiency. Of the 1.3 million active duty service members today, 16.2 percent are women, and that percent is steadily growing. Women now make up 20 percent of the Air Force, 19 percent of the Navy, 15 percent of the Army, and almost 9 percent of the Marine Corps. And women make up almost 33 percent of the Department of Defense civilian workforce, with over 250,000 women serving in the DOD. Whether in the military or as a Department of Defense civilian, America's mothers, daughters, sisters, and wives have answered the call of duty and selflessly served in defense of our great nation. No matter the situation or the challenge, women have persevered and become a key component in our national defense. Let us now hear from several women within U.S. Army Material Command who serve our great nation today. I'm Brigadier General Christine Beeler the Commanding General of Army Contracting Command and the Head of the Contracting Activity for U.S. Army Materiel Command and U.S. Army Medical Command. I have nearly 31 years of service and am privileged to lead the 6,000 civilians and soldiers around the globe, enabling over $102 billion in national defense every year through the power of Army contracting. I grew up in the 1970s and 80s and absorbed the energy and attitude of those times through the messages in the media, my hometown, and my family. The reality was women were still very limited in roles that they could do or should play in American society, but there was a growing movement around the roles American women would play. The marches for the Equal Rights Amendment were all over the news. In 1972, Title IX of the Education Amendment prohibited sex discrimination in all aspects of education. In 1981, soon-to-be Princess Diana deleted the obey from her vows. In 1983, Sally Ride was the first American woman in space. In 1984, Geraldine Ferraro became the first woman to be nominated for vice president on a major party ticket. We had the music of Pat Benatar, Cindy Lauper, the Arrhythmics, Aretha Franklin, Tina Turner, and many other strong women succeeding in their chosen careers and their voices and actions inspiring my generation of young women. The message was work hard, help each other, and you can accomplish your dreams. During my time at Boston University in Army ROTC, through today, the message of be all you can be inspired me. Equality was a right. It was expected, and obstacles to that expectation were dispatched with decisive action. Now, that's not the case for everyone, but that's how I felt, and, and that's my story. After all, I joined the world's largest meritocracy, Every adult family member told me I could be and do anything if I worked hard enough. And the Army said the same thing. And it proved to be true. Hard work, lifelong learning, helping others and accomplishing the mission, and having a positive mental attitude have determined the trajectory of my life. During my career, I have seen many changes. The elimination of the ban on women in combat, equal protection under the law to property rights and establishment of credit, 
the opening of positions in combat units made becoming G.I. Jane or Captain Marvel possible. Freedom isn't free. And even as the rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are enshrined in the written words that establish this nation, it's the deeds that keep those rights available to all members of society. That has to be the message. The work is never done. There are new generations to inspire, to be army strong, to choose their warrior, to challenge the status quo and make our national aspirations solid, concrete facts. I look around at the men and women I work with every day, and they inspire me to work hard. I hope I inspire them. My name is Cynthia McCrary, and I'm the Deputy Executive Director of the AMCOM Logistics Center. I started as an AMC intern a very long time ago, and from there I went to several uh, different jobs, including technical writing, uh, several stints in the, P in the product management offices, and then ending up my career here in the ALC. To me, women's equality means having a seat at the table and not being treated like a man, but being able to bring what we offer, uh, it definitely through diversity and inclusion, to have that seat at the table and to bring what we offer, to bring those things that make us women, that we are natural nurturers, we are natural administrators, being able to bring that to the table and to make the environment better just by being who we are. So equality, to me, doesn't necessarily mean being the same. It just means being included at the right time so that we can bring what we offer. I started with the federal government 36 years ago. So when I entered the workforce, logistics was primarily a man's world. So how has it changed since I've been here? Women are not so much the unicorn anymore uh, in the workplace. I personally have been the first of, in many positions. And now when I look around, I see women everywhere. So now women have, brought, have been able to be a part of that workforce. Now when you see a woman doing great things, even as high as being the, pre the Vice President of the United States, it's not that she's a unicorn anymore, it's more the norm. And I am just ecstatic that women have been given that seat at the table and we aren't such an anomaly anymore. Uh, it's changed because in logistics, particularly in the maintenance realm, women have proven themselves and uh, paved the way for people coming after us. So I am elated that we have made that difference in the workforce. I'm elated that we're given that seat at the table. I think that the focus areas that need to be changed are really just how women are viewed and the perspectives that we have. Ch changing is just going to come from time and training. For instance, if a woman becomes emotional, uh, if a woman shows passion, it looks as if she's becoming emotional. And so the only way you can get over that is if women are included more and if people are trained on there are, although women are different, just because of our makeup doesn't mean we're any less than men are. I think that we're on the road to that and I think time will only, will bring about a change. But I think it's really, uh, Virtually, it's in the mind. It's really more of a mind thing than it is uh, reality. But we all know that perception is reality. So the more women are allowed to be in the room, the more uh, what is characteristically makes them different will be viewed more as what makes them valuable. And the more women are included, continue to be included, the more they can bring that value and that worth to the table. So times have changed. Things have changed. I believe perception is what needs to change a little more. It's not so much women, it's not that we don't have the skill sets, it's not as though we're not uh, valued, it's just that our differences need to be viewed uh, from the perspective of what we bring and not what we take away. I'd like to see a difference in how women are perceived. For example, if a woman shows passion, she's often thought of as being emotional uh, or and not assertive, but aggressive. If a man comes in a room sometimes and slams something down on the table, he's often seen as just being passionate about his work. But if a woman does that same thing, she's seen as being emotional. So it's, a, it's, it's really all in perception and how people are viewing both. 
It's not that a woman is any less passionate about what she's doing than a man. It's just how she's perceived. So if I could change anything about the workforce, it would be perception. It, uh, not so much as the hard things. I believe women are afforded the opportunities that men are in today's world, in today's workplace. It's just the perception. And that's going to come with time and training. But we've come a long way, but we have a long way to go. Hello, my name is Dr. Juanita M. Christensen. I am the Army Material Command Deputy Chief of Staff, G4. My current direct responsibilities are to address the strategic requirements for facilities, housing, barracks, energy, and environmental needs for the active duty component of the Army. I have served as a civilian for 17 years, having previously spent 20 years in industry. My duties and responsibilities have been broad, from acquisition, research and development, to logistics. I have held key leadership positions at the Space and Missile Defense Command, program offices within both program executive offices for aviation and missiles in space, and I also served within the leadership ranks of the DEVCOM Aviation and Missile Center, my last position there being the executive director for the center. I am an Army civilian, and I live by the Army ethos. Therefore, when I consider what women's equality means to me, I look upon the foundation of the Army values with the primary one of interest being personal courage. Personal courage is what was required by women to push for the equality to vote. And now we must continue with our personal courage to push for treatment as equals in the workforce. We must strive for the same leadership opportunities and inclusiveness in the senior ranks of our Army. We must be deliberate in building the bench and providing mentorship. At the end of the day, we cannot be fearful of being a woman and being recognized and appreciated for the unique knowledge, skills, and attributes we bring to the table. I am Carla Anahosa Landers. I am originally from San Antonio, Texas and 100% Hispanic. I think the areas that I've lived in and have moved to have greatly influenced and molded me uh, for who I am today and continue to do that. Uh, I've been through several cities to include Cleveland, Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio, Grand Junction, Colorado, back to San Antonio, Round Robin, and now Huntsville. Uh, I landed up at university in San Antonio and quickly found myself in a man's world studying computer science. I was one of three women in my graduating class for computer science back in 2005. My perception of women's equality is that we're still seeking it out. Uh, I really think that I've strategically done things in my path and my career and my life uh, to counter, counteract that. And for instance, in uh, college, you can choose a PE, a physical education course. And so naturally, I chose golf because that's where the decisions are made. That's where the men talk. That's where the tournaments were on the weekends. And I needed to know how to play the game in every sense of the definition. And so I took golf because I wanted to be included once I was in my career. Uh, another perception is that I was lost. So again, back in university, principles of algorithm design one, I walk into the class and I will never forget my professor asking me if I was lost. And he said, the business building is right next door. And I said, well, that's great, but I'm here to learn computer science. I really don't think women's equality has changed much in my career. Um, that's speaking since 2005. I started as a contractor and spent just a little, just enough time to realize that I was doing more work than some of my peers and getting less money. So I found out that I had to seek out my raises and my promotions myself, uh, which can be very stressful um, and challenging when you're a working mother. 
And I've done the same as an Army civilian coming in since 2010. I've actually changed titles and positions and offices five different times. And that build, builds that breadth that everyone talks about um, for you to be knowledgeable on everything. But it makes you come out of your comfort zone in so many different ways and, and gets you exposed to so many different things and realities that you get smarter and you get tougher um, and, it, and it shapes you. And that's what more women really need to do. And I think that's what we've seen actually is stronger women. And I've seen for women's equality, more women actually helping each other instead of competing against each other which I think is that groundbreaking momentum that we really need. I think the challenge that remains is how women are perceived and heard. Uh, for instance, uh, many times in a meeting, if I'm sitting next to a colleague or a coworker, they will look to the male first as the subject matter expert when really I'm there to speak on the topic. And so for us to get that platform of seriousness uh, and that intellectual ability that we have um, is fantastic. I mean, it's always great to be underestimated, but for the respect and professional value behind it, uh, we've earned that seat and need to be looked at first. I think what I really like to focus on is women's equality what does it really mean? Because how I define women's equality may be very different than a counterpart to me, my own mother, to my daughter. We may prioritize what our equality means to us based on how we were raised, where we currently live, where we work, or where we even play. Because all of those things are really important and I think equality really is redefining itself almost every single year that we continue to go into the future. One of my favorite quotes is by Maya Angelou, and it states, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. I am Julie Serrano, the Army Contracting Command Sergeant Major. I have served in the active military for over 27 years. Through my time in the military, I have trained, developed, mentored, and lead soldier in the human resources and contracting command career field. I've been married to my husband, Ralph, um, for over 21 years, who also served in the Army for 24 years, who recently who retired in 2011. I have two beautiful children, Elena and Jaime. My perception of women's equality, it has made significant changes over the years. As doors has opened, an opportunity arose, affording women to latitude to serve in positions previously restricted to their male counterpart. Fortunately, the military in the past ha years has changed their selection process based on performance and potential. This firmly removes the possibility of bias-based selection and focus on rank structure, allowing gender equality. Throughout my career, I have observed constant steady fast demolishment of gender-specific barriers, empowering recruiting of women into challenging career fields, and encouraging men to embrace the changes. So the goals and milestones that I have obtained through my career, um, it has been based in, in, on, the, on the pioneer women who served and paved the way prior to us to be here today. Um, I have witnessed females officer to become the first um, Brigadier General in their career field. Also, I have witnessed um, females have attended the Ranger School and obtained their, earned their Ranger tab. And just recently, we just saw in the news history, the Air Force, they selected their first um, Chief Master Sergeant of the Air Force. With that being said, also I have seen that um, there's a constant and uh, steady phase of demolition, demolition of the gender specific barriers, also of the empowering um, soldiers to recruit 
women into these career fields that are restricted or gender specific, and also empowering soldiers, males, to embrace the changes. I think in the future they should have a modification concept on the specific MOS, gender MOS, um, for um, the military occupational specialties that were when women and male come in to um, re re enlist or recruit, they are allowed to um, get into this MOS regardless of their gender. What better way to close our Women's Equality Day celebration than when an excerpt from the Department of Defense Women's Equality Day observance message. Standing tall and strong as defenders of freedom, liberty, and justice, women remain integral to our national defense and military operations, promoting troop readiness, providing humanitarian relief, helping to deter war, resolve conflict, and promote peace, and supporting civil authorities and missions around the world. Traveling far and wide, withstanding time apart from family, and forfeiting the comforts of home to serve their country and protect their fellow Americans and citizens of the world, women of the Defense Department continue to exemplify the discipline, resolve, and unwavering allegiance to the flag and are among the most devoted of public servants. On this Women's Equality Day, we want to say thank you to all women, especially those who serve and support the United States military, not only for your defense of the United States, but for the example you set for women all around the world.